we were talking earlier about something very interesting in the language of Korea, the yes. Korean language. Doesn't the Korean language, in my experience of it, doesn't it have a lot of spiritual meaning or moral meaning built into the words? Yes, yes. Actually, Korean words has the built-in culture of enlightenment. Culture of enlightenment, wow. And spiritual growth. Uh So when you learn Korean words, when you deeply study, then you can feel the philosophy. For example, does, does everybody know that? Like, do, in Korea, is that like a well-known no, component of the not, education? No, Yeah, it is not. So, okay. there are not many Korean people know this deep meaning of spiritual, spirituality of Korean language. Well, and I guess that's not so strange because in, uh, in English as well, there's a lot of words that have a deeper meaning mm-hmm. that we say every day. Mm-hmm. I always think this is not the best example, but welcome. 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 Mm-hmm. It, mean, it means come in well. Wow, right? well, well, welcome. Oh, great. We don't think about uh-huh. that deeply what it means. We just say welcome. Habitually. And, and we can say it even insincerely. Insincerely. Most of the time. Yeah, welcome. Come on in. But it, it comes from a deeper place. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I think of sometimes when I hear that these Korean words have such a deep meaning. But yeah. not everybody would necessarily no, think about no, that all the time. Right. Yeah. So, for example, you know, good. I feel good. You feel good. I feel good. You say... 좋다. 좋다. Yeah. 좋다 means 조화롭다. That means harmonious. Oh. Not only me feel good, but you feel good. So you and I feel harmonious. So, so that is good. So that's kind of built into the language. Yes. And then what is the opposite of good? Mm. That's bad. Bad. Right? Yep. Bad means 나쁘다 in Korean. 나쁘다? 나쁘다. Uh. 나쁘다 came from 나쁜이다. Is only me. Oh. So it is not like a good or good or evil, like black or white thing. Mm. But if you only think about myself, wow. only about me, then mm. that is equal to bad. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I think a lot of people. I mean, that's that's fantastic. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's kind of like that. Written in the language, there's a moral code. Mm-hmm. That's really fascinating. And I think a lot of, maybe a lot of scholars of Latin and Greek and French and other languages that have influenced English would say that there's some of that in English. But here's the thing about English. And I've read this really interesting article. I'm going to try to put a link in the description. Really interesting article about the history of the English language Mm. and some of the theories about why English is such a difficult language to make sense of. Tell me about it. Oh yeah. my God, I'm having so difficult time to learn English. It's because the rules don't apply regularly, right? There are some rules, but there are lots of exceptions. Yeah, lots of exceptions, so you can't really just learn the rules. Anyway, they said that English, I'm paraphrasing here, but the article said that English language was passed from one group to another, and sometimes it was passed to non-native speakers that conquered a country, and then it was passed on to their children. Oh yeah? So it took in so many different language cultures and mixed them together. Oh. And it was kind of like people learned it, but they only learned half of it and then they passed it on. And really? So then it, yeah. And so that's why English has like all these pieces of different languages. Oh. Anyway, that was the sense that I got from reading the article. You can read it for yourself if I put the link down there. Okay. But that's interesting. I found that so interesting because when you have described some of the meaning in the Korean phrases uh-huh. and Korean words, it resonates with some of the things that we say, cliches or phrases in English that have a deeper meaning, but it's almost like in English, they're just individually, you have to pick them out here and there, you can't see the whole picture. Mm-hmm. But when you say it in Korean, mm-hmm. it comes together, oh, oh, those are related, oh, yeah. I see. So then, this is just one example of Korean language. Mm. So maybe in other in the future episode, we can talk more about Korean language and English language. Sure, sure. That'd yeah. be great. Right? That would be great. Yeah. So let, let me give an example. We have this, the Korean, the Korean term for energy circulation, healthy mm-hmm. energy circulation. Mm-hmm. The English translation is water up, fire down. Water up, fire down. Yes. So in Korean, it is su sung hua gang. Su sung hua gang. Yeah. In English, water up, fire down. But then when I learned, okay, that's the Korean su sung hua gang. <laughs> And then I realized, oh, in English, we already say, keep a cool head. Keep a cool head, yes. That's something we've, I've said my whole life. I, you know, everybody knows that. Or, you're a hot-headed person. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that, too. What does it mean? It means somebody's impulsive, reactive, gets angry, mm-hmm. not patient. Mm-hmm. What, do we, what do we say if you've got 
a warm belly. We say you have a fire in your belly. Fire in your belly. Mm. Now, how's that kind of person? That person is motivated and focused and passionate and powerful. And then we don't say that you get a cold stomach. <laughs> we say you get cold feet. Cold feet. And these are all very, very common traditional mm -hmm. English sayings. Yeah. But when you look at it from the point of view of an energy principle, yeah. suddenly they all meet together. Oh, those are all talking about something that can happen in our body with energy. So interesting. Yeah, Su Sung Hwa Gang is deeply you know, ingrained, ingrained into Korean culture. Mm. So when you go to the uh, Korean medicine, you know, uh, Korean medicine, then they always talk about, the acupuncturist always say about Su Sung Hwa Gang. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, so it's very well known. Very well known, and and I was grown up uh, hearing that my mother says, you know, you should keep your head cool. Mm. And then, in the summertime, I want to, you know, remove my blanket from my body and then sleep. Mm. But always, my mother put blankets on my belly uh -huh. and my feet. You should keep your belly and feet warm. So it's. It's the kind of thing that mothers and grandmothers, they know very well, right? Yes. yes. They don't let you forget yeah, it. Right. So interesting. And then there's another one which relates to what we're talking about today, mm -hmm. which is the terms for... Death. Death. Yeah. Actually, there are many kinds of words for death in Korean. Mm. But you can summarize into five different levels. Mm. It's not different only kinds, but it signifies the level of death. The level of death. So what do you mean by that? So, you know, some people's death is kind of people, you know, resp uh, really uh, take, took it for granted. Mm. Or some people's death, they really mourn together, they feel so sad. I see. So, so sometimes people make a big show of mourning. Right. But for other people... Like, oh, okay, it's good that it's, he, it's, he, he, he left. Right. And, yeah. and that can make us feel, oh, that's so unfair. But maybe there's a different way of looking at those different types of death and that's, yes, that's yes. what this Korean yeah, because, thing is about. Because death is, you know, well dying is culmination of well living. Right. So ah. if you, this person does not live, live a good life, then there's no way that the, the neighbors or other people will respect this person's death. So what do you mean by live a good life? Or what, what are these examples of the different levels of death? So for, let me begin with the lowest form. Okay. Yeah. So it is called 돼지다. 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 Yeah, 돼지다. 돼지다 came from 돼지다. It becomes. Becomes the earth. Becomes the soil. Becomes dirt. Yeah, becomes dirt. Uh -huh. 돼지다. The original meaning is not bad, but when you say 돼지다, you never want to say it to your parents. Okay, 돼지다 so, is very curse. So socially, culturally, it's a, it's a bad... It's like curse. It's, it's a like, curse. It's like croak in English. Oh. Yeah, I see. Yeah, croak. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a very bad word. Yeah, yeah, that's not a good, nice one. Yeah. If you want to say, oh, if you hurt somebody, oh, the person dejida, mm. then it's like, oh, you feel like you feel good. They die. It's very like, bad. Like, oh, they went back to where they're supposed to go. Yes, yes. Mm, I see. Dejida. And so the that's next, the lowest. The lowest. And the next form is just regular, mm. regular death. 죽다. 죽다. Yeah, 죽다. It is die. It's ordinary. So People just, die. He died. Yeah, 죽다. Mm. Yeah. You can see this from the newspaper. He died. He 죽다. Mm. Yes. So just kind of factual. Yes. Factual, non-emotional. It's like factual. Mm -hmm. 죽다. Mm. And then the next one, next level, is something that you want to say to your parents or grandparents or your uncles. Mm. Like, 돌아가시다. It came from return. Oh. Return to where we came from. Mm. Yeah. Return to where we came. And there's, a, there's an element of respect in that. Yes, respect. It's like pass away. Pass away. Yeah, mm. yes, respect. They lived a good life and I respect your death. I'm mm. so sorry. Mm. There's a interesting, third. interesting. Yeah. So these. The language, because we have these different terms in English as well, and they have different meanings and different feelings. We have things that mean, oh, I'm glad that person's gone. <laughs> and then we have other things that say, oh, they passed away, they passed on, that imply a little bit more meaning and more mm -hmm. mourning and, and respect. Mm -hmm. But the fact that the language is so formal yeah. really tells you that it's not just yeah. my feeling. Mm -hmm. 
that there's something more being said. Right. So, yeah, there's like other forms like 유명을 달리하시나 They means that, oh, bright and darkness, they changed it. That's, that's a term for death? That's a for death, yes. Yeah. It's very respectable form. So bright and darkness, they... They change from bright to darkness. I don't know. From darkness to bright. They exchange states. Wow, wow interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Wow. And also the another level, the fourth level is 서거 하시다 or 붕어 하시다. Hmm, and what does that mean? That is a very respectful form. Like, you, you, you don't want to use it for just regular people, ah. but you use this for somebody who served for national good mm, or so, public good. So maybe if you had like a, a hero. Patriot. A patriot yeah, hero. hero. Yeah. Or some inspiring leader. Yeah, inspiring leader, spiritual leader or political leader. If you really like them, then... And then it's like nationwide mm. respected, then you want to say, 서거하시다, 붕어하시다. Mm. That means that people are so sorry, so sorry that that person left. Uh, and then we respect. I wonder, I wonder in English if we have a term that really captures that. I don't think we do. If you, if you can think of it, comment below. But uh, if you, it's hard to say that in one term in English, I think. When I was studying, studying English in Korea, mm. I learned that bite the dust. Bite the dust? Yes. Is a bad one. Bad one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, anyway, this, this one. <laughs> bite, bite the dust, kick the bucket. Kick the bucket? Yeah, those are not say, good. <laughs> those are not good. Those are not good. No. It is like level of tejida then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Croak. Pretty, I think those are pretty yes, much okay, croak. Okay. Yeah, those are, those are right down. Then I'll be very careful about using that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what you just described about honoring a national or political leader, don't want to say oh, they no, bit okay. the dust. No, 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 That's no, not no. going yes. to convey what you want. Yeah, okay, yes. All right. And then there are final form, the most respectful form of death. Mm. And so even higher than respecting a national or political right. leader. And not many Korean people know this term. Really? Yeah, because we have this long tradition of spirituality in, in Korea, uh, culture history, but we, haven't, we have forgotten lots of things. Mm. So the most respectful form of that is called Chan Hwa. Chan Hwa. Chan Hwa. Okay, so it sounds like two syllables. Yeah, one word, two syllables. Okay. Yeah. And Chan means heaven. Uh huh. Hwa means become. So becoming heaven. Yes. But, you know, heaven is the closest word for, from English, but it's not exact. Translation. Right, because we have a whole lot of images associated with right. heaven. Yes. But maybe it's a little bit different than that. Yes. So this type of chan does not have the religious meaning. Mm. Definitely not like heaven or hell. Rather than that, chan means nature. Ah, uh, so some kind of heaven nature. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's capturing all yeah. that. Heaven means wow. something invisible. Mm hmm. Yeah. Something, mm. our vision, dream, our universe, nature. Mm. And then Hwa means become. So that person becomes a nature. Wow. And that that's person, the highest level. That person became a part of nature. That's the highest level. Wow. So you call Chan Hwa to only those people who attain spiritual completion. So maybe oneness. Yes. One, they attain oneness mm -hmm. with the nature. Oneness with nature. Yeah. And, and uh, when we talk, even in the Western culture, we talk about enlightenment, we talk about mm -hmm. consciousness. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of talk these days about oneness, yes. about reaching the connection with the universal. Right. I, I've been looking at uh, David, Dr. David Hawkins. Uh -huh. He wrote Power vs. Force. He yes. did decades of study about consciousness. Mm -hmm. Really, really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And he talks a lot about what is consciousness. Right. Ultimately, it's the universal energy field. Yes. It's the oneness. And when yes. someone reaches that level, mm -hmm. then they become one. They recognize that they're part of that oneness. Right. Maybe that's similar to yeah, become one similar. with the nature of Chanhua. Yes. So we have...